French poetry says Le ciel est bleu, la mer est verte The sky is blue, the sea is green These verses are only a poet's vision Because if the sky is blue, the sea must also be blue And if it is green, that means water is not calm or is not clean As a matter of fact, when clean, sea water can be considered as a blue filter, darker and darker, going deeper and deeper. But apparent sea color depends of sky color, of bottom color, especially in turquoise blue tropical lagoons, of the surface conditions, also of scattering particles and, of course, of the eye position, with no Daltonian eye. It is a matter of point of view. Surface, when calm, is like a mirror, for in a body just above or just beneath. When it is cloudy, the sea looks grey in Monte Carlo or in Scotland. In Black Sea, at sunset, you can see a Red Sea. And in Red Sea, at night, you can see a Black Sea. Is it not surprising? But when you look from the top, water appears transparent, except when waves and tidal currents disturb the bottom. In shallow waters near the coast. But offshore, it is different. The blue color is the same almost in all the oceans around the world. Along the Atlantic coast of France, the green sea water was blue when borrowed by Gulf Stream from Caribbeans. Magic are the colors which exist, sometimes imperceptible, but which really exist for our divers' eyes only when seen under artificial light. How many times did I dive into submerged caves where sunlight hardly reaches? Why does nature display such a palette of various colors difficult to find anywhere else? Profusion of tints, attractive at the first glance, becomes, after a while, a sign of bad taste. I could say the same about tropical fishes, but I can understand that your opinion is different. These colors change brings me back 50 years ago when I was studying chemistry in Marseille Science University. We used to say, chemistry brings you to anywhere, as far as you leave it. I did not imagine how this sentence was prophetic for me, because chemistry brought me aboard Calypso in 1952, in Marseille Old Port, Jacques Cousteau, on the after deck, asked me what I was able to do. After my answer, nothing but using my brain and my fingers, he proposed a one-week test. And the week lasted more than 20 years. First job he asked me to do 
was to repair an underwater still camera. And when ready, he sent me to check it on a 2,000 years old Greek wreck at 40 meters depth, alone for my second dive. I will not relate all circumstances, but we can say that chemistry brought me to the underwater photography. Actually, photography is chemistry, immersion as well as film. Breathing with or without aqualung is biochemistry and also the entire human body. So we can modify our sentence and say, everything brings to chemistry. Sea water is a solution of salt in a liquid called H2O. But sea water is also something else that only a diver can feel and that a camera can hardly capture on a film. To meet with that sensation, many divers, men or women, embark aboard uncomfortable boats in a rough sea, sometimes are seasick. They dive in cold water and rarely are victims of bends. I discovered myself underneath Calypso Hull, not a silent world, but a fluid, dense and blue world in which our body, thanks to Archimede, is like in a zero gravity. But if the entire body is under pressure, we can realize with eyes only the existence of water in which everything shades like a ghost in the mist. It is the reason why I painted under the sea. Teenager, I already painted landscapes around Marseille where I was born. Marseille Old Port, from several points of view, harbour outlet, harbour entrance, two worlds for the same place, and two different views. Marseille Road, Chateau d'If, islands, the sea from above. But before painting underwater, I waited about 12 years in order to get the point of no return. Trigger arrived in October 1965 at the end of a saturation diving experiment called Conchelf 3. Four weeks at 100 meters depth in a spherical habitat with five other divers. During these three weeks on the seafloor, I only took one picture, 12 second exposure published in the National Geographic magazine in April 1966, a couple of hours before our way back up, alone at 110 meters, in a dark blue light falling from the surface. I realized that only painting could afford me to restitute such a feeling. A few weeks later, I dove to paint my first canvas under the sea. The first attempt was not a masterpiece, 
because water took the label off the color tubes so that the dive finished in a perfect confusion. But after a while, technique improved. Oil colors stick to canvas only if, before immersion, I protect it and also I have to ballast the wooden stretcher with lead to obtain a neutral buoyancy. Now, no more easel. I put my canvas on a rock or on the sandy bottom, standing up or on my knees. When the model is chosen, a tube is used as a pencil to draw a few lines patterns. The colors straight squeezed from the tubes are mixed with a palette knife. Palette knife is faster and more useful than a brush. A simple motion helps to cover a large surface. No time to be lost when diving. Are the fishes affected by painting? Not by color, but by picture. I don't know. But more interested seem to be the porpoises, serving as models helped by diving girls especially for me, of Eilat, south of Israel. In a cove, close with a net, they live in a semi-freedom. Dolphin Reef Institute uses purposes with a double purpose, touristic and therapeutic for autistic children. This inquisitive trigger fish was probably anxious to see me settled on his laying eggs. He attacked me, trying to bite my skull by chance protected by a hood. I painted an underwater video cameraman and also a diving school in a swimming pool. And for a TV program, I made the portrait of a diving trumpet player. At the end of the dive, I repack my tools and come back toward the surface with a decompression stop, if necessary. On the deck, I rinse with fresh water and later on will come retouching and finishing. These impressionist blue canvas were exhibited in France and in other countries, but I must say that some guests are more interested in feminine visitors than in my paintings. Nevertheless, there is no better critic than a diver who said, in that canvas, I feel underwater, I feel on the bottom. I will not comment all the pictures of the paintings made during the last 30 or 40 years. They have no title, only a number. Each visitor discover what he wants. Even the fishes I did not painted. Maybe one day I will not be able to dive anymore. So I have already taken in the sea unlimited source of inspiration, some new abstract subjects, and also other subjects I will call curvilinear, 
because nature, which is supposed to hate vacuum, actually hates straight line and love the curves from staring heavens to the curve of the back. Entire universe is rotating and when we see around the sun or the planets with satellites orbiting around them, we are obliged to say that curve is the golden rule of nature. Have you ever seen a cubic planet? Man only invented straight line, an artificial line. When he built Roman arch, he followed the example of natural roof of caverns. And if nature fabricates rectilinear edged crystals, they are exception to the rule, as it is an exception for human construction, a sail inflated by the wind. The sea also modeled boat hulls on waves as well as pebbles in the surf. Ask a child to draw the sea surface, you will obtain a sinusoid. But now, let's have a look underneath the surface. We will never finish to inventory all the curves in fishes, whales, or other marine mammals, octopus, octopus, crustaceans, all the harmonious shaped species. Even man becomes elegant in the sea. At last, do not forget funny sketches of which the sea is an endless reservoir. These sketches come from a booklet I entitled something like uh, Swell of the Sea Touch the Bottom of Spirit. Sharks. I took hundred pictures of sharks, but after many years and thousands of underwater photos, I feel I was more a reporter than an artist. Almost all the divers discovering Red Sea for the first time shoot plenty of photos and obtain approximately the same results. We just have to look at dive magazines or visit an exhibition. Photos are well exposed, colors are beautiful, even too much sometimes. But we found almost no blue. Underwater pictures is made under the sea, but it is very important to feel underwater. When a diver blows bubbles, we realize he is in the sea, especially with a giant octopus. If not, without bubbles and without blue, where is the sea water? Marine mammals like sea elephant do not lose air bubbles when swimming, but in the blue they look really alive.
And when they dive as deep as some small submersibles at a depth where sunlight does not penetrate, it is finished for the blue. Waters black, even at noon, and even with powerful lamps. About black, the weak side of photofilm is the incapability to accept contrast. Underexposed parts become black and overexposed parts are white. A strobe can help, but not enough to capture the variety of tints which in the shadow human eye can distinguish. The system lens plus film cannot compete with eye plus human brain till the painter's hand. Another advantage of painting is to be able to suppress a disturbing detail, for example, to mentally erase in the street of an old village the howful TV antenna. Do not think I am enemy of the photography, which allows to obtain interesting results, utilizing technique or ideas or accessories as this photographer and his middle-aged camera. As we say, each one on the hearth bears one's cross. But in the sea, water bears the diver and also the cross. Skiing on an easy slope is less dangerous than a descent in the blue. Finally, I like as well photography and painting. They are two ways for a still artistic expression, needing just an ounce of imagination. In 1989, two centuries after the French Revolution, I painted this canvas entitled Lobster Thermidor. And I invite you to pay attention to the sail rigging, which is entirely revolutionary. For another exhibition, I borrowed from Toulouse Lautrec, his favorite model, Yvette Gilbert, whom I asked to take a bath in a lagoon full of sharks. We can also look at the sea in the depth of the eyes, the sea which, as everybody knows, is the matrix of life, the sea which gave birth to the earth, our planet. But who can claim to be the father? Thank you.